NVIDIA hasn't owned up to the recent order of 10 puzzle that we saw. You can check the channel for that. But it's pretty fairly obvious that it was from them because it does indirectly mention Fermi. It directly mentions Kepler. They're all related somehow to Maxwell or Pascal. And so today I thought it'd be fun to talk about the GP100 architecture. And this is the GPU for Pascal, the first GPU for Pascal that was unveiled at GTC about a month ago in the Tesla P100 graphics accelerated or accelerated card. So this is not a video card for gamers. It's a scientific card, but it's on the Pascal GP100 architecture. And this Pascal architecture will be used in the gaming cards in some form. Now they're gonna strip things out, of course, that are not necessary. They don't wanna validate or build to increase cost when that can be reduced. So reducing cost by eliminating things like HBM2 and some of the lower end cards makes sense, or by reducing DP double precision or other things of that nature. So we're gonna talk about the SM architecture or streaming multiprocessors within GP100, talk about the cache, unified memory and HBM2 versus HBM1. Before getting to that, here's the specs table showing the GP100 Pascal specification compared against previous Kepler GK110 and Maxwell GM200 chips. There are various versions of Pascal in the version shown here. The chip is actually simplified slightly compared to its maximum potential. We'll talk about that in this video. Meet Pascal. This is the GP100 block diagram on screen now that we showed from GTC last month. Although the GeForce gaming chips will be a lot different in terms of their architecture, their design at the high level, the low level is the same. It'll likely at least at some part have the same memory subsystem, but other cards may have GDDR5 or GDDR5X. We don't exactly know quite yet what the so-called GTX 1000 series cards will have. But Pascal overall is going to look like this. GP100 is the biggest GPU that NVIDIA has ever made, measuring at 610 millimeters squared and using the new 16 nanometer FinFET process node from TSMC. All previous generation architectures from both AMD and NVIDIA have been on a 28 nanometer process node. So this die shrink has been years in the making. The process shrink champions an era of reduced wattage and more densely packed in transistors, which continues the performance per watt gains that NVIDIA and AMD have been boasting for the past few years. AMD began its performance per watt improvements with Fiji by liquid cooling the Fury X, which reduced capacitor leakage and resolved other potential issues. But it didn't undergo the tremendous die shrink that Pascal and Polaris herald. Further performance and power efficiency gains are aided by a move to FinFET transistors, which means that power leakage becomes less significant. This also marks the EOL for planar FETs in GPUs as all major silicon manufacturers have now transitioned to the FinFET design. FinFET transistors use a three-dimensional design which extrudes a fin to form a drain and source on the gate. The gate encircles the transistor's fins and GP100 has a transistor count totaling 15.3 billion across its 610 millimeter squared GPU die size. GP100 is rated for a 300 watt TDP and pushes 5.3 teraflops of FP64 double precision compute performance and 10.6 teraflops of FP32. FP16 is also available natively at 21.2 teraflops on GP100, but it's more critical than it might sound on paper or in YouTube video. It's mostly though for deep learning applications that we won't dive into here. Just as a quick primer, deep learning benefits as the precision is less required by nature of the backpropagation algorithm. So FP16 allows for reduced memory consumption and faster processing because that precision of FP64 or FP32 isn't required, they can benefit instead from the speed and then sort of use the redundancy and parity to check and make sure all that data is good. The Tesla P100 Pascal card hosts 3584 CUDA cores for FP32 and 1792 CUDA cores capable of double precision at FP64. The full GP100 will have 1920 FP64 cores if it's released and Pascal's P100 base clock rate, just for reference here, is 1328 megahertz and is 1480 megahertz when boosted pretty fast. For a GPU. For the first part of this architecture deep dive, we'll start with the SM or streaming multiprocessor, talk about graf graphics processing clusters, which enclose the SMs, and then we'll get into unified memory and HBM2. GP100 hosts six graphics processing clusters or GPCs, each of which contains a set of texture processing clusters or TPCs. And for every one TPC in Pascal, there are two streaming multiprocessors or SMs. In total, there are 60 SMs on GP100 with the Tesla P100 accelerator hosting 56. This is what an SM looks like in the Pascal architecture on screen right now. There are 10 SMs per GPC accompanied by one half that count of TPCs or five total TPCs per GPC. 
Each SM contains 64 FP32 single precision CUDA cores and 32 FP64 cores, or one FP64 core for every two 32 cores. And these stats are for a fully enabled GP100 GPU, so that will of course be different for the gaming GeForce cards when they come out. Still though, it's a good look at how things work architecturally. This is a marked reduction in total core count per SM versus Maxwell and Kepler architectures. Despite this though, there is an overall higher per GPU core count. So the total core count is higher with 3,500 plus on Pascal GP100, but the per SM core count is lower. Maxwell has 128 FP32 CUDA cores per SM, and predecessor Kepler had 192 FP SP CUDA cores for each SM. The reduced CUDA core count per SM is because GP100 has been effectively partitioned into two sets of 32 core processing blocks, each of which contains independent instruction buffers, warp schedulers, and dispatch units. There's one warp scheduler and one instruction buffer per 32 core partition. Each partition also contains two independent dispatch units per SM, there's four total per SM, and each partition contains two of these dispatch units, and there are four total per SM. Each partition further contains 32,768 32-bit register files. The SM segments share a single instruction cache, unified texture and L1 cache, and four texture units, or TMUs each, and one 64 kilobyte shared memory block. Pascal has half the cores per SM as Maxwell, but the same register file size and comparable warp and thread counts. GP100 can sustain more in-flight threads, warps, and blocks, partially because of the increased register access presented to the threads. Overall, the core count of Pascal GP100 is higher than GM200, even though the cores per SM are lower. That's just because there are more SMs, but as a whole, this increases processing efficiency by changing the data path configuration, and that's something that's only aided further by the move to smaller processes and the FinFET processing node. The data path organization of Pascal requires less power per data transfer management tasks, and Pascal schedules tasks with greater efficiency and consumes less die space than Maxwell, also critical, mostly by dispatching two warp instructions per clock. One warp is scheduled per block, or so-called partition as we've been using that word, or segment, and that's all shown in the sort of uh, block diagrams that we've been showing on screen. Each SM has four texture units, so there's a maximum possible count of 240 TMUs, L1 and texture cache are split for shared use. Unified memory most immediately benefits programmers as it reduces their manual workload by eliminating the need for explicit mem copy calls between the CPU and GPU memory pools, but it's still useful to us as well as sort of benefactors of this impact. With regard to Pascal specifically, L2 cache is unified into a single 4096 kilobyte pool as opposed to GM200 3072 kilobyte L2 cache. And that further, again, reduces reliance upon DRAM, which is huge for speed increases. Pascal dedicates a single pool of 64 kilobytes of shared memory to each SM, eliminating previous reliance on splitting memory utilization between L1 and shared pools. For more detail on that and all the other stuff we're talking about here, hit the article links in the description below because that has more on unified memory, sort of a GPU version of DMA and the SM architecture itself. But now we're gonna talk about HBM2 and HBM1, which is of course very interesting to anyone who followed Fury and its launch. Fiji first introduced high bandwidth memory on AMD's Fury X, which stacked memory vertically atop an interposer, which is then on top of the substrate. This reduced the physical distance between the GPU and memory, which reside on the same substrate, and was joined by a bus width increase and reduced electrical and thermal requirements. Each stack of HBM1 uses a 1024-bit wide interface capable of producing 128 gigabytes per second throughput per stack. So it's 128 gigabytes per second per stack. And that can put upwards of a terabyte per second, depending on what you're using in terms of the GPU architecture. GDDR5 pushes a maximum theoretical throughput of about 8 gigabits per second per die, with Micron's GDDR5X pushing 13 to 14 gigabits per second per die. Fiji was limited to 4 gigabytes total capacity due to yields and cost, but HBM2 will change the game in terms of capacity. HBM2, relevant to Pascal devices like GP100, will be able to maximally host 16 gigabytes of VRAM pursuant to increased die density of the new version. HBM2 densities will run upwards of 8 gigabits with 4 to 8 dies per GPU, maximally enabling that 16 gigabyte capacity, although the initial P100 accelerator shipments will be 8 gigabytes. 
GP100's HBM2 is a composition of five dies presented as a coplanar surface to simplify heat sink mounting and hotspot cooling. Basically, it's flat. That's all that really means. And the stack starts with the base die, then vertically turns into four DRAM modules stacked above it. And we have a micro photo of this under a microscope. GP100 has a 4096 bit wide interface for its HBM2 with each stack running a 512 bit memory interface between them. So that covers the initial Pascal GP100 launch. And of course, the GeForce cards we're all very interested in. Those will be here eventually. I don't know quite when just yet, but hopefully sometime soon. Of course, Polaris is coming out from AMD, Polaris 10. And all of these GPUs are moving to the new process node, the 14 in AMD's case, or 16 nanometer in NVIDIA's case, FinFET process from in NVIDIA's GP100, TSMC being the, the manufacturer of that process of the actual silicon itself. So that's the basics of Pascal, the, or the in-depth basics of Pascal. For more, as always, article below. It has all the charts and diagrams and things like that and more text, which should hopefully help you get through the dense information a bit more easily. Other than that, stay tuned because we have plenty of other content coming up this weekend. We're out here in Austin for DreamHack and we'll be talking about some of the goings on there. We'll also be talking about very soon actually Computex and that starts uh, late May. So uh, subscribe if you're not subscribed already and you'll find all of our Computex type A factory tours, things like that. Patreon link in the post for all video as always. Thank you for watching. I'll see you all next time. <laughs>